computer. Hi, everybody. I'm here with my dear friend, Paul Valentine of Valentine Volvo. And Paul and I were speaking about, I was really upset the other day. I don't know if you noticed, but on my Facebook and my LinkedIn, I posted something about a Calgary organization that was doing everything wrong for COVID. They even had COVID employees serving food to people. And also there were people changing diapers around the, the food. Anyway, so I, I was going to post that and then I'm like, no, I want to post a good example. And so Paul, I'm um, wondering if you could share with us some of your best practices around this challenging time. Certainly, Kath. And first off, just I'm a big fan. Love your book. Love your Twitter feed. Um, thank you for all you do. Um, so uh, great uh, to have this opportunity, not only to share with you, but also to, to uh, find out what's going on in your world. Um, so I think the first thing that we've done that is the key, and we're Volvo, we're safety, so it's all about safety. So we need to keep our staff safe. We need to keep our customers safe. Sick staff uh, aren't productive. Sick customers don't come back. So we made the decision very early that all that matters is safety of everyone involved. And this pandemic is a short-term issue. Uh, a couple months is really short-term and long-term. We want to survive as an organization, so everything was safety. And the safest place for people, according to the government, was at home. So we laid off two-thirds of our staff right away, uh, sent them home, put them on EI or CERB or any of the government programs that were possible because that's the safest way. Having people come in here when there's no business is a waste and a risk. So that was the first thing that we did. Uh, the second thing that we did uh, for the survival of our organization is we were, we were concerned with cash flow. And so uh, right away, as soon as everything started to really hit, we called every supplier that we had, we told them our situation, and I would say 97% of them gave us uh, deferment, uh, discounts, uh, different terms. Uh, the ones that didn't, they explained their situation, and we're fine with that. We want to work with everyone. And then we did the same with people that, um, that we do business with. If they needed help, we, um, we listened to them and we tried our best to accommodate them. So that was key because if there's no cash coming in, we're trying to minimize how much cash going out. Um, the third thing that we did and we're still working on is we're looking at every government program to see if it can help and how it can help. And what was a big learning experience for me was uh, got advice from a good friend of mine who said, make sure that you can survive without government help because when have you seen a government program that's been on time, uh, um, available as promised, and didn't have a bunch of, uh, of loopholes and exits that made it difficult. So we planned everything based on not receiving government support. And if we do get the government support, we, utilize, we will use that to bring staff back when it's safe and to help with um, topping up wages because we asked everybody to take a pay cut. Uh, the fourth thing that we did, and I think this is good for the majority of small businesses out there, is that we're not trying to force the market. Um, trying to force someone to buy a luxury car during a pandemic is a waste of advertising and a waste of effort. We're here if people need it. Uh, we have a large lease portfolio and a lot of people's leases are coming due. So they either have to get a new car, buy it out, or defer the payments a couple months. So we give them those options. Uh, a lot of people are getting their car ready for summer because they're trapped at home and coming to get your snow tires off is a good day trip. So, but we're not forcing business. Um, it's just a waste of everybody's effort. I mean, uh, for me personally, buying a car, buying a new house, planning a trip, all those things are secondary to the safety of my family, uh, um, the uh, uh, survival of my business, the survival of my staff. So we're not pushing a bit. We're here, we're open if people need us, but we're not trying to set any records during a pandemic. Uh, and the final thing that I think we've done very well is we communicate to our clients and to our staff uh, as much as we think is important, but we don't want to overwhelm them. I think a lot of business owners notice that every day there's 20 webinars and Zoom meetings from people trying to add value and it's nonstop and you can't sit in on everything and a lot of it overlaps. 
So for our staff and our clients, we give information to them as we think they need it, and it's really important. So we're not reaching out daily, we're not reaching out weekly, we reach out monthly. If there's something important, we'll send that out. We did that the other day because we had, a, we, had, we had an update. Um, so the, the clients seem appreciative of our efforts. And for the staff, um, same thing. We want them to make to know that you know we're still in business. We're trying to get it, we're gonna get them back as soon as we can. But for the time being, the status quo is you know, sales are down, revenues down, we don't need a lot of people in here, and I don't want people coming in, endangering themselves, and there's nothing to do. So I hope they get their garden looking perfect, I hope they catch up on that book, and I hope they pick up a new, um, a new hobby or a pastime. So those are the five key things that I think we've learned in the last two months. Those are great takeaways for business owners and, and kind of a positive and actionable takeaways for business owners. Paul, one of the things I love about what you do and what you stand for is your role in our community. I think that Valentine Volvo takes such a positive, uh, proactive approach to uh, awakening our community. So are there some things that you're doing now that you'd like to share with people? Because I think that's a key value that I've noticed at Valentine Volvo. Well, I think what I've seen, uh, and the pandemic has kind of uh, uh, pressed the point, is that you can buy something from anywhere, um, and it looks like people are really trying to be more locally based now. Um, there's the whole story about our PPE coming from overseas where we don't uh, manufacture anything here. So the long term, I think people will say, you know what, I don't mind buying something made somewhere else, but local businesses that do a lot for the community, they need to survive. And so to, I think in the past people would maybe, we, maybe go to another province or go to an, another city to save a certain amount of money. I think post pandemic, people will say, you know, I need to keep my money in Calgary. I need to keep my money in Southwest Calgary because this organization and a lot of them, what they, what they did during the pandemic, you know, made my city a better place. And so I need to invest to keep them strong because when the local businesses shut down and everything's from a distance, you know, it's not easy to get customer service. It's not keep, easy to keep people happy. I know there's been a huge bump in, um, in online shopping, but I still think retail will come back because, you know, it's a pleasure to deal with someone who has your best interests at heart. And it's a win-win relationship. My, my father's been a Rotarian forever. And the question is, is it, is it fair to all concerned? And you know, a, a, um, a pessimist will say, the perfect deal is when both of us are mutually unhappy. Uh, I disagree. I think the best deal was when both of us are satisfied and we know that, that by me buying this car, you're not uh, taking a second class deal. And for you buying this car, I'm making enough money that I can take care of you for the rest of your ownership. Great, thank you so much, Paul. Is there anything else you'd like to add to you know small, medium size, and growing businesses? Anything else you think they should know at this time? Well, I think that uh, uh, the people that I trust to really tell me what's going on are the investment uh, advisors, the bankers, the people whose job is based on uh, predicting what's going to happen in the economy and the market. Uh, I respect doctors. I'm related to some doctors, but they have to be overly pessimistic because if they're wrong, lives are lost. Um, I'm related to lawyers. I know they have an important part of our society, but they are pessimistic because if they're wrong, there's lawsuits. But anybody inv invested in finance, if they time it right, they make money. If they time it wrong, they lose money. Losing money is not the end of the world. They'd rather make money. And so what I've seen from all of the people that I trust they say this second quarter is awful, so do what you can to survive. The third quarter is blah, but there's going to be little green shoots. And the fourth quarter this year retails back. So get through the next couple of months. Make sure that you look at all the government um, uh, subsidies and then get ready for the fourth quarter of this year because retail will be back. Cars, everything, travel. I believe that the rest of the year we will end up being down this year, but not as bad as we are right now. Thank you so much, Paul. And you are somebody that I trust and we trust. So thank you so much on behalf of the Awakening Company and also our community.
You're welcome, and thanks for the time, Kath. Pleasure.